Good evening, Colonel John Shoppers. I wanted to switch up the angle a little bit because it's October now. Right? <laughs> Ooh, right? So we're getting to how it is. Pay no attention to the coat rack. Um, welcome to our, our table. <laughs> uh, I am carrying notes because there are so many first appearances. It is an exciting week of books that fit on the table, which is kind of nice that we have a week of potent comics, stuff we stayed late reading, and it all fits. There's no extra bits. Oh, I really wasn't ready to start. No, <laughs> um, we've got a lot of stuff coming up, and thankfully we have a flyer for that. October Late Night Comics is coming up uh, next Thursday. We're going to have all 50 Cent back issues. 50 Cent downloads. You said back My bad. Half off cent. back issues. There's a lot of 50 Cent. No one comes back. in thinking. 50 Cent dollar books. All of them. No qualifier. You don't have to get 100. You, don't have, you can get one. Cool with that. Hand me two quarters. Um, and then half off back issues, which includes the wall. We had a really fun time slinging these guys at uh, Jeff Harper's last Cleveland show on Sunday. That was cool. John Shear was there. He showed up literally five minutes after I left. So we like had a perfect shift change. <laughs> exactly. Um, these guys ran the shop. It was a good day all around. Yeah. We had big holes in that wall. There's a couple holes up there still. A couple good things too. I saw the first appearance of Carnage. The guy was really stoked about it. It was sweet. It was a lot of fun. A lot of uh, $5 Spectres. With our uh, now four dollar DC Silverage, so oh, and John pulled out blank covers because uh, we're in the process of deciding. Actually, I meant to ask you your ideas today, John. Um, what our Christmas art show theme is going to be? Ooh. We had a good idea. I don't want to like put it out and have, sure have the you. yeah. Remind me after the right. the get together here. Um, gosh, what else? The shop is covered. $20 deluxe edition hardcovers. We pulled out the rest of them because they were getting a little unruly in the back room. Um, so take a good look at some wonderful titles from some wonderful authors. Maybe a few favorites of some people in the shop. I'm not sure. Uh, a lot of stuff, though. We got everything from Turtles to Image first volume hardcovers and third volume hardcovers. Uh, but good stuff. So 20 bucks. Let's move them along. We were going to use them as raffle prizes, but we're not doing too many... Uh, Upcoming raffles. And I've been putting some back issues in there to, for spooky season, so we've got some really cool like horror comics that have made an appearance oh. now in our back issues. Like, so, yeah. Psycho? Full yep. set of Psycho? Yeah. That's good stuff. It's cool. There's a child's play in there, too. Yep. Um, more Nightmare. Hellraisers. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I guess uh, I got launched into first appearances. What else am I missing from this flyer? Oh, Bumblebee. uh, Bumblebee's going to be here. October 19th is a Saturday. Yes. And Bumblebee's going to be here for two hours. That's it, though. From like 11 to 1. But the coolest part about Bumblebee being here, besides the fact that an actual Transformer is going to transform in the parking lot, which will be cool, which is really cool, is that Aaron did us a print of Bumblebee hugging Bumblebee. So cute. Super group hugs. You get a free one while Bumblebee's here. We got a bunch. I'm sure there'll be an extended time period to hand those out. Um, cutest thing we've given out in a while. Transformers related. Well, yeah. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, our Halloween trick or read giveaway is on October 26th. And I'll be back in town, so I'm kind of stoked. Yeah. I have a, my, a dream fulfilling Halloween costume. <laughs> uh, you'll be dressed up. I always do. One of the old favorites. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so join us for that. We're going to give away comics and candy and have some sales, and that's always a good time make it back here we just got off a plane and came here last year within like yeah the hour yeah uh so yeah let's do first appearances right yeah what am i missing uh free copy of transformers number one when bumblebee's here oh yeah, free copy of transformers number one when bumblebee's here so come see bumblebee come get a free comic come get a free print october 26th yeah. no october 19th for bumblebee god there's so much happening it's so much too many numbers i'm gonna switch to names First appearance of a Transformer named Genvo in Transformers number 13, which is the beginning of a story arc and was amazing. Made John Shear care about Transformers more than he's ever cared about Transformers. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> Spellguard is a new group in Blade Red Band, which was sweet for a lot of reasons. We'll get to when we get to the top of the table. Uh, Ultimate number five is Ultimate Hawkeye, which is a fantastic Cap Hawkeye, Hawkeye issue. Ewoks is uh, Midro, who's my new favorite Ewok. Kyle? Agreed. Okay. <laughs> we didn't really have, I didn't have a favorite Ewok before. I can't speak for you. <laughs> uh, favorite, sure. J John Shears made me watch the uh, 
the the movies. Yes. Yeah. You watch movies. Yeah. You watch adventure. <laughs> you guys want? I can take the camera here. <laughs> uh, Sentinels is you guessed it. First appearance of Sentinels. That's Sentinels number one. Exceptional X Men is oh yeah, Melee. Two new mutants, Melee and Axo, and they're on a couple covers over here too. Uh, Conquest Conquest twenty ninety nine is Spider Side twenty ninety nine. Let me know if there is a non twenty ninety nine version of Spider Side. There is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there yeah. is. I looked him up. Oh, oh. he looks like uh, he looks like Rep Rep. Oh, <laughs> and I'm immediately uninterested. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My uh, Absolute Batman. We have a lot to say a lot about Absolute Batman. Yes, I can't we do. Say it. I'm going to get a sip of water after I talk some more and then do it. But Absolute Batman number one is so, so good. Um, is the first appearance of a group of hooligans called the Party Animals. But we will talk. Please stick with us because all we have to do is get through Marvel and then we can talk about Absolute Batman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we'll, 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 we'll always talk about Absolute Batman. <laughs> but... <laughs> Look at him, he's taking the position. This is a gigantic G.I. Joe compendium. This is the first new thing we have on the table from Image Comics. It is the first 50 issues of Marvel's G.I. Joe. It is a honker. But we're going to perform a feat. A feat. A feat. <laughs> it's the lightest book ever created by man. And it's, it's so thick. It's <laughs> amazing. It's like the first 50 issues. And it's like... You can read this like anywhere, and and feel comfortable reading it anywhere as long as you've got some place to just carry it around. I would bring that book on a cruise because if you fell off the boat and you're holding the book, <laughs> you'll be fine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Two very cool covers: uh, a modern cover and a classic cover. Claim yours now. How much was it? Sixty bucks. Yeah. Sixty-five bucks. Uh, then some reprints from Image. I wanted to get the big guys out of there. Listen to that. Phone book. Uh, falling in love on the path to hell on its fourth printing? Yeah. For number one, we've got reprints, second printing, and second printing and number two and three. Unbelievably recommended book by us. Please take our take our word for it. They're on the printings to prove it. Ooh, printings to prove it's good. Ooh, mm. nice. And then Cobra Commander's on uh, issue number two for a reprint, which is wrap, – that wrapping up was great, too. We got some good Energon stuff. We got to see a preview of G.I. Joe number one in our – Fancy schmancy comic book retailer email, and uh, it's fifty. I'm just I'm looking forward to it. I like all this is coming out. Uh, one of my faves. I could rave about this, but I do want to save some time for Absolute Batman. <laughs> uh, Extremity is a Daniel Warren Johnson book. If you've been enjoying his new stuff with like the Moon is following us, do a power bomb is very recent for us. Um, all of his stuff with Transformers, obviously. This is his indie beginnings, maybe. More mainstream because he hit Image, but like his first real take on the Task 12 issue miniseries and it hits hard. It's a great vengeance story. It's about art and war and you ask, ask me about go it. Go back and watch like one of our old Friday night videos when we did it and we talked about it. We did. We were able to experience Extremity in many forms now and, and it's worth a read. This is the entire thing collected for 50 bucks. It was the first thing. I took it out of the box before Kyle could count stuff today. <laughs> yep. yeah. uh, Dracula is a portfolio book from J.H. Williams the mm third. -hmm. Did you crack yours? I did crack mine. So it's um it's paintings with story. Um so like one page would be like this painting, and then the facing page would be like a little bit of text from Bram Stoker's Dracula. So it just kind of runs through that story with beautiful paintings. artwork. It's, it's almost like a silent film. Ooh, cool. Yeah. All right, I didn't know that's what it was going to be like. I thought we were going to have like pinups. <laughs> uh, next to it, uh, another from Rick Remender. They're keeping them reprinted. I love it. In paperback for the first time, all of Seven to Eternity. Um, kind of a and ds tale. This guy's got to decide whether he's going to submit to the god of this land or resist him with magic. And there's a lot of really sweet artwork in there. It switches up a little bit. Starts off with Opania, though. And then the first volume of uh, The Last Mermaid. Uh, which was in this same format for its first five issues, so uh, which is cool. Transformers number 13 is the beginning of a new story arc, and it is, can I say, the yes. basic story? You can. It is the origin of Starscream in a beautiful manner, like painted the perfect picture of where this bot is coming from and where he landed. Right in between story arcs, it's like, I mean, like they're robots, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
it's uh, yeah, it's perfect, especially for somebody who is really not cared about Starscream whatsoever. Guilty. And I have now cared about Starscream mm -hmm. more than I have since 1984. Mm -hmm. And some good, good little fan pokes, good little like stuff we wanted to see in Transformers. Cover A, beautiful. Cover B, cover C, cover D. Spoiler cover? This is the new character. This is Genvo. That's cover E. And then uh, blank. Cover F. Oh, yeah. And then we have ratios above it. So 1 in 25 variants, 15 bucks. Soundwave. Soundwave. Uh, 1 in 50 is $25. Keep it purple. Yeah. Right? And then uh, 1 in 100. That's, is that 80? 80. Thank you. I'm going to get a little pen on there later. Yeah. Next. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Scarlet with more Energon Universe stuff wraps up. Number five. I didn't get. I, this is another one. I gotta read this and Geiger. I haven't read. Nope. Yet. All right. Oof. I started and then we had to go to the video. So uh, sorry, sorry, about going in blind on Scarlet at the end, but I'm I'm ready. I'm, uh, it's on the it's on the pile. Cover A, cover B, keep it purple. Cover C, personal fave actually. The upside down. Oh uh, yeah, I love crossbow that. shot. One in twenty five variants, and those were transformers. So we're moving up to Geiger. We're on number seven. Another time saver because I didn't read it because otherwise I probably. Just keep on going. Uh, technically, two cover A's. They split the covers for us this week. So if you have it on your file, it's one of these two covers, which are kind of equally awesome. I don't know. I hope the glare helps Kyle out on this oh, one. Oh, yeah, it does. Does it? Oh, okay. So there's a skull behind him. Fantastic. Homage to Midnight Nation. Yes. Um, so another Jeff Johns book. Great looking cover. Top Cow, right? That's kind of what that's going for? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we'll, we'll call it cover B, but you were just going to say Mutant Zebra. Yeah. Like any normal human being would. Uh, wonderful. It's so cute. <laughs> it's our cover C. <laughs> I actually personal fave. Yeah. Co cover D. Gunslinger spawns on number 36 this week. Another really fantastic cover on this table. Uh, there's cover B for number 36. And Scorch is on number 34. I'm lifting stuff up. Fun one from Image. I'll hold this one. Uh, Hyde Street came out last week. Wonderful success for us. We are loving our horror anthologies. Keep them coming, Image. All about it. Uh, they sent a thank you or like a one per store retail variant late. So if you're a Blackest Night fan or a Hyde Street fan, it's spiffy, shiny, and fantastic. Both of us were licking our lips at this because of our yeah. Blackest Night era love of comic books. Mm, can you talk for one second? I'm going to yeah. get water. So uh, trade paperbacks, uh, power pack into the storm, uh, full collection there. Uh, <laughs> can talk about power pack? Yep. <laughs> Uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, that whole collection there. They're calling it Scarlet Witch Volume 3, which is oh, actually okay. what it should be. So yeah. good for them. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, Pete and Miles together. This is Arachnobatics, and it is an incredibly fun Spider-Man story drawn by Umberto Ramos. Uh, Night Thrasher, that full story is collected there. And then we've got Epic Collections. Moon Knight, uh, Trail of Mark Spector, or The Trial of Mark Spector is a new Epic Collection. And then the Fantastic Four, the world's greatest comic magazine, is the very first, like, 20-some issues. And it's a reprint. It's, so it's volume one in the Epic Collections of Fantastic Four. Uh, admitting, as a Ghost Rider fan, I really hate the shield on the front of that bike. <laughs> We're on Ahsoka number four. Uh, cover A, and then a 1 in 10 concept art variant for 10 bucks. Ewoks is on number one. Not the best story in the whole world, but it's an Ewok book, and you get a first appearance of an Ewok. Not going to yeah. lie. Some inexplicable jungle action going on. It's for the curious. <laughs> Ultimates number five is a really great Cap Hawkeye issue. It is an ideology conversation, and it's good for a new building of a team. We got cover A, amazing. Cover B, and a 1 in 25 variant for 15 bucks. X Force is on number four. Man Thing issue. We got cover A right there with Man Thing, cover B without Man Thing, and cover C with Ultimate Awesome Man Thing. <laughs> so good. Exceptional X Men are those two first appearances. So you got Melee and Axo in there. I am pretty sure Axo's on one of these other covers. I didn't read the book, so I'm not sure. It's not those two. Okay. Uh, there's cover A. Cover B's got Doctor Doom. Cover C, there's Axo. So. Uh, then we're on a 1 in 25 variant for 12 bucks and a 1 in 50 for 25. Marvel Zombies Dawn of Decay is on issue number two. All Thor issue, if I understand from uh, correctly. There's cover A. We got cover B with Blade. Um, <laughs> a fantastic look close. Thor cover C. Uh, 
cover DZ Homage, if you're a Bay Ray Bill person, like I am. And then uh, we're also on Phoenix number four. So I think this is penultimate issue. There's your cover A. Is that gore? I think it's yes, gore. It is. Cover B is your Doctor Doom. That just seems preposterous. I don't <laughs> think that would happen. And then uh, one in 50 variant, beautiful all art cover for 20 bucks. Spider-Man, Black Suit and Bloods on number three of the four issue miniseries. Cover A, cover B, cover C. Personal, I like that one. Conquest, Conquest 2099 is combining the threads of story from the last two 2099 miniseries. Uh, so we're, got, we're getting some Vampire Paradise. That's what Yay. we were reading about. Cover A, cover B, and cover C with the frame variant. Venom's uh, Trucking Through Venom War. They're on number 38. Cover A, cover B is your Doctor Doom mashup. Cover C, and then a fantastic issue of Fantastic Four, which is something I never get tired of saying. It's a standalone Halloween issue. John Shear could talk to you about it for a half hour. I could. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but for now, we're going to lay it rest on a beautiful cover A and a Saturday morning cover B. The only thing that's missing from that cover A is the skull is actually wearing a little top hat. Oh, yeah. well, that just <laughs> makes it <laughs> ten times better, right? Uh, we're wrapping up with Tombstone. This is kind of a knockdown drag out here at the end of the story arc. We're at number 59 for Amazing Spider-Man. The Disney variant gets us our fav one of our favorite covers in the shop. Uh, cover C... Uh, we got a 1 in 25 variant for 12 bucks, and then a tie-in to Venom War with Wolverine number 2. Top of the table gets us Sentinels number 1, which is their first appearance. They're basically hunting bad mutants. They're p pulling up an X-Force vibe. But, it's, but as I said, aren't all mutants bad? According to them. According to them, I they are Sentinels. Which is kind of a mutant-led Sentinel. Sentinels team, so they're kind of like trying to keep the peace between humans and mutants as for five issues that's not going to go well yeah there's <laughs> there's a lot of purple in it it's there you go yeah <laughs> speaking of which <laughs> the logo variant right next to it it's such a purple week it's a purple week good you know yeah it's always purple week for you blade red band we should have scheduled an interview with you <laughs> for, for how we feel about this kyle and i read it together on a monday on a very nice little calm monday and we can agree that I think Marvel is trying to milk us for the Red Band thing at this point, which is fine. I get it. Comic companies want money. There's not a lot in this issue that's more violent than the front cover. If you can get a look at it, it's a head splitted, head split, head, head, head splattered, splintered, split, splintered, split, 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 split old head vampire. And that's, that's it. That's what we're getting from the book. But it's a good, it's a continuation of Blade that I absolutely wanted after Blood Hunt. Yes. Like Blood Hunt. Left Blade hanging a little bit, like possessed by, and then he's like, oh, the Avengers will deal with it. But now we get to see what's, how he's dealing with it himself, which I really super appreciated. Plus some vampires I did not mind seeing getting eviscerated. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right? And for once, some non-vampires getting eviscerated. They deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cover A, awesome, as I mentioned before. I've Oh, uh, Axe Hand, Cover B. <laughs> uh, we got a 1 in 25 variant. For 20 bucks for a red band, that seems awesome. Yeah. Those variants never never really stop going up. I don't, think John, I don't think John priced them this week. Oh. Uh, hey. And then we got, why I got water. <laughs> uh, so I've been having a number of discussions with people as this book has been coming out. As Ben said earlier, like a couple weeks ago, when... We got the preview of it. He's like, read it until you are satisfied. That's exactly Which right. was about here. So I still had a good chunk of space left to go. Finished it today, and it is still wonderful. It was wonderful the first time I read it. Even better the second time I read it. There are so many little callbacks within the issue itself. It is, you want, like, people don't want Big Batman. Read this. You want big bad <laughs> absolutely do you want the weapons he has you want the like everything about his costume this book works on so many levels it is a great batman book nearly perfect batman book has all the tropes has all the characters just in a completely different version that you've seen 
there's a reason they're calling it ultimate absolute batman it could just be called ultimate batman like if they didn't if dc had the rights to the ultimate universe it's great i cannot more highly recommend it and we gave it to everybody who got gets batman just about so you should absolutely give it a try we are not blowing smoke this is a fantastic book in every way Speechless, right? It's great. I agree so. 100% with what Cher said. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm, so. I'm rarely speechless. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. All right. So there's your cover A. Do you want some water? Nope. I did. <laughs> well, uh, can, I, can I say something about Absolute Batman? Yes, you, you said you were Cheers. speechless. I know I'm speechless then, but that was only, it was very momentary. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. Uh, I will just read on one point, though. I don't think it's wonderful. I think it goes hard. I think Batman, like, means it. I think this is like a true ground level up Batman story. I I if you have not enjoyed Scott Snyder's Batman in the past, I believe you will enjoy it in the future. It is amazing. As a personal Nick Trigota fan, I'm gonna put this in my pile. As a Nick Trigota <laughs> fan, it I'm so satisfied with the artwork alone. And one thing John Shear did not mention in his excitement is that absolute Batman is five dollars. This is a near perfect Batman issue in every way, shape, and form. For five bucks, I'm so stoked. It's oversized too. So it's phenomenal. It, it, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, it's great. So there's cover A. Jim Lee did a cover B. Spiffy shiny foil variant for cover B, and then spiffy shiny foil variant for cover C. We've got a one to twenty five variant, which is amazing as well. A little foily. No, yeah, but it just looks like one in fifty at thirty bucks is a spiffy shiny foil variant. So, lots of awesome covers. Um, Fantastic book. Bonus news on top of good absolute Batman news is that we uh, have a ton of. It's gonna be like forty five of them or something here. More than that, but we also reordered fifty copies that are coming. Not first prints, uh, second prints that are coming out like the day before Halloween, which is awesome. Like yeah. read this book. It's great. It's it's the best Batman book I've read in, in recent memory. Yeah. <sighs> so good. Uh, Action Comics, uh, issue 1070. It's all in. Mark Wade is the new writer on there. And the Phantom Zone comes into play in a, as he put it, very Cronenberg-esque way. <laughs> and that's absolutely correct. Uh, also, uh, Supergirl gets a backup story where She's going off on a mission. Don't know where, but nobody's allowed to know it except Supes. So cover A, cover B, which is wonderful. And then we've got one in 25, $10 variant for that there. Uh, right next to that, DC versus Vampires, World War V, issue number three. Starts off with an amazing Green Lantern versus Wonder Woman fight. And it's just great from there. Uh, Batman Gotham by Gaslight Kryptonian Age is on issue number five. And yes, that is Superman. Yes, he is a sheriff. And yes, he is Andy Griffith in this issue. And it is wonderful. Amongst many other cool things in that book. Uh, Batman Robin issue 14. Philip Kennedy Johnson starts a new story arc on that one. Uh, so there's your cover A. And then your $12, $1 and 25 variant for that there. Green Lanterns, uh, the Civil Corps special. Uh, what was what was it? Bad Mo Bad Mogo. Oh, bad Mojo. Mojo, Mogo yeah. the planet, the Mojo. Green Lantern planet turns into a red <laughs> turns into a Red Lantern and goes rogue. Oh, yeah. Uh, might as well take this interlude to let you know that we have Superman Justice League membership cards to give away this week and a few Batman's left over. So stop in and buy DC Comics and be Superman. Yeah. Back to you, John Shear, in the newsroom. The <laughs> Batman uh, issue 237 is the facsimile. It is the Halloween issue. And as John would love to point out, it's the Loveland Halloween issue. So there's like all sorts of Marvel like hidden things in there as well. But also uh, has a cool 1940s Batman backup story in there. Uh, all in facsimile edition. Kevin's really excited so, about that. Kevin, you super stoked about Batman 237? Yes, yeah, there he is. He's super so, stoked. Uh, collection wise, Batman the Cult, uh, Jason Todd's like shining moment before he got killed uh, in full $40 hardcover glory. Uh, the Batman Elseworlds uh, Volume 2 is all the vampire Batman stuff in one awesome collection. 
if you've never read it, the Kelly Jones art is worth it just by itself. But it's amazing stories, fantastic book. Uh, Superman 78, The Metal Curtain, volume two of the Superman 78 stuff. As long as they keep drawing soups like like that, I'm all in. It's still good. Um, next one, Sandman, the complete Shakespeare uh, collection. So it's all the Shakespeare stories that happen within Sandman. Um, most, nearly all of them are drawn by Charles Vest, so they're mm. beautiful. I cannot wait. Uh, and it is the perfect primer if you're like, I don't want to spend 20 bucks on a Sandman thing. I just want to get the feel of what Sandman's about. This is it. This is the perfect way to jump in and feel smart about yourself and read good stories. So, yeah, I love wonderful. Feeling smart about myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Terminator is back at Dy Dynamite. Uh, Declan Shalvey's ri writing it, and we've got a new issue one. Um, below that, final DC thing the cinematic universe celebration of the movies. So, every, like, every movie, every back, like, Hey, look what, what happened in Man of Steel. Look what happened in The Dark Knight. Whole history, all that fun stuff. Uh, Magic Order, Volume 3 from Dark Horse. Yeah, uh, hold on. I'm sorry. I was complaining whoop. about that cover earlier, but I do yeah. want to give some public credit out loud to you guys since I was being such a pain in the butt about it. Keaton's front and center. Good yeah. cover. I'm fine with it. You got Keaton's front and center. That's, cool. That's not Keaton. It's Bale. What? It's Bale. Oh. Yeah. Forget that. If you, want, if you want Keaton. <laughs> I was like, I'm looking at it from an angle. If you want Keaton, you got to go with the... Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman. So. I'm just so confused. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Magic Order Volume 3 uh, has been re redone by from Dark Horse. And then new Dark Horse number one, Seance in the Asylum. Uh, creepy? She didn't read I it either. Didn't, didn't read, read that it. one. It's so. the same artist as um, uh, Maniac of New York. Okay. Uh, cover artist. Same in interior is different. Yeah. Someone pretends to be a Seance artist. And they're trying to manipulate the patients, but there's real ghosts. Ta-da. Uh, this one's sweet. This is legitimately... Murder Kingdom. This is legitimately like Disneyland stalker murder, but it's all character cast-based. So it's just like underground, backstage, like, shh, don't ever break character shenanigans, gone like completely awry. And it's pretty bloody. The the killer reveal at the end is actually yeah. super solid. I wasn't expecting to have fun with that. I mean, Mad Caves, yeah, Mad Caves really like knocking it out of the park on some of their books. Uh, Rocketeer uh, breaks free is on issue number three. There's your cover A, your cover B, and then we have a one in ten variant for six bucks. Get it nice and cheap. Uh, and then I think we should pass it on to Andrea. Taxi's back. Who knows when that new movie's coming out? I hope it does. <laughs> we all want But we have a comic book. It's like a reimagining of Toxie's origin. It's fun. It's goopy. There's toxic waste everywhere. <laughs> Not as gross as the trauma movies. So if you're iffy on that, like, you'll be fine with with the comic book. Oh, I would be super solid with selling that to a teenager. Oh, This yeah, is my first yeah. experience with Toxic Avenger ever. I've never seen the movie. So I read it, and it's so fun. I'm not aware of any comparisons to origin or anything like that but like it's a fun and they tell it backwards from day four to go to the origin and you just kind of fall in love with him like page by page it's pretty yeah, it was yeah. pretty good first read and good covers it's too. a good trauma story without being like so disgusting there's cover a and then the apocalypse now homage cover b <laughs> <laughs> so sweet and then collections barbaric is on volume four the born of blood also has the Death Stalker one shot in there as well. Oh, cool. um, Godzilla, uh, here there be Dragons Volume Two is on issue number four. That's your cover A. That's your Oof. fantastic cover B. Oof. Uh, Space Ghost on uh, issue number six. That's your cover A, and then your cover B by Bjorn Barons. Oh, that's um, a good one. Blasphemous in hardcover, and this is a beautiful looking hardcover. Like it's the Murky Adolfo. Like they got the full collection of that. It's their second one after Samba, isn't it? Third. 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 Uh, so, yeah. Gone. Gone. So, yeah. So, I like this presentation on the hardcover. Good job, guys. I think they're doing pretty well with that. Yeah. Uh, Life's on issue number... Two. Two. So, there's your cover A, your cover B, and then your one in ten, ten dollar variant for that there. Uh, right below that, uh, Minor Arcana by Jeff Lemire's on issue number two. I've not read this yet, but I read issue one. Really liked it. 
Uh, Crocodile Black by Philip Kennedy Johnson again on issue number five. Still, still creepy. Uh, Tegan and Sarah's Crush. Uh, there, I think it's their second graphic novel. Mm -hmm. So there's, we've got that back in. My Hero Academia is on volume thirty nine. <laughs> Whoa, cow! And then Spider Man. Is that Girl. just in America? Is it? Is it further along? Oh, yeah. it's got. It's got to be. Right? Yeah, it's okay. got to be. But uh, Octo Girl, new Spider Man manga from uh, the creator of My Hero Academia, Vigilante. Uh, so. If you want to read your Spider-Man story backwards, here you go. <laughs> uh, Star Wars High Republic Adventures, uh, stories from Beyond the Stormwall, issue number one. I think it's a one-shot. Yay, for one-shots. So, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Monster High has also got a Halloween special one-shot. Oh, I'm, I'm loving it. This is the beginning of the Halloween one-shots. Oh, yeah. I know last week was, yeah. but like, but now I feel the wheel turning on it. Oh, also, uh, Elvira makes an appearance in the Monster High. What? Oh, wow. yeah. cool. And they didn't even put her on the cover? No. Nope. Wow. <laughs> Wasted opportunity. Yeah. Merchandising. Uh, Garfield's on issue number three. That's a fat Garfield. <laughs> uh, Sesame Street's on issue number two. There's your cover A and your cover B. Uh, and then K the Cat Sitter. Perfect plan. Perfect plan. Uh, Kitty Quest, Phantom Frenzy. Damn. Babysitter's Little Sister, Friends. Karen's Grandmother's, Garfield, Full Course, Full Collection, Volume 4. Mm -hmm. Eat it normal. <laughs> <laughs> Bluey. Bluey's jumping ahead to Christmas. We got some Jingle Bells <laughs> in a collection. And then below that, uh, Mad, because it's perfect. You got your politics uh, in Mad Magazine form. Christmas, 4th of July. Well, we're just getting the, yeah. the voting. I understand. Oh, is there an election coming up? I think so. Oh, what? Don't forget I, to get your just little look thematically Ohio. with your Ohio <laughs> folks. I'm going to put it. Yeah. Click a cool kid on my pants. Uh, Origins of Marvel Comics. Guys bought a bunch of them, so we only got a few left. Get it now. Pretty cool. Uh, this land, the Blue Beetle story, This Land is Our Land. Uh, still got that. And the Harley and Harley still have that. And then Tony Fleeks is coming. Oh, yeah, Tony Felix is coming. Yeah. Um, November 10th. 10th. Yeah, he's going to do a signing. He's stoked. He's on his national tour. We've got a bunch of his stuff in stock. We've been talking about his stuff for years. Ever, I mean, ever since page one of Stray Dogs. Misty finally finished Stray Dogs. One of, my, one, of, one of the most absolute original ideas for a comic book I've ever, ever experienced. Um, my phone's going to die, so thank you guys for joining us for this table. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night. Get absolute Batman. Get absolute. Yes. I don't think there was any doubt at this point. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see you tomorrow for your comic books.